Um, um, first, first of all, thanks for the chairs for inviting me to talk today. Talk today. Um, I apologise if there's a bit of background noise. There's a lot of workshops going on in the office today. And um, if you can only see me, I've, mute, I've turned my video off so you can't see the positions that I'm standing in in order to be able to talk so that you can hear me. Maybe I'll turn it on for giggles later. Um, so just a quick thank you to the chairs for inviting me to talk today. My name's Joa Baratner. I'm the Chief Technology Officer of a company called PSMA Australia. Um, just to give you a bit of background, PSMA Australia is an unlisted public company which is owned by the governments of Australia. Um, so our goal is to facilitate broad and sustainable access to high quality location data. Um, and, and so today's presentation is about codeless government for one of those data products, um, which is the geocoded national address file. Um, so I'll give you a quick intro as to what GNAF is. Um, that's a geocoded national address file. Um, to discuss some of the standards that are used in it, um, to describe the process for um, maintaining codes that currently goes on today. Um, it's not much of an involved process, and that's why we're looking at um, describing a process or a proposed process to, um, to codeless governance in the future, um, why the change will become evident um, as I go through the, pr the presentation. So simply put, um, GNAF is uh, the trust, uh, trusted index of Australia's street addresses and their associated locations. I'll put a snippet in from our um, data product description, which you can find online. Um, I could probably put some links into the, into the notes and I'll flick the, the, slide, um, the slide deck through with some annotations uh, later. Um, so basically to go through where the data comes from, PSMA receives addresses from a number of trusted government sources. Um, it runs a vast number of uh, integration rules, which is built up over time. But essentially to duplicate the addresses, um, it identifies aliases or addresses known by other names and then checks them against reference data sets, which include things like the roads um, data set and the localities data set. Um, it then links the addresses to other re relevant data sets, which include the ABS uh, mesh blocks for linkages to the statistical data and um, Australia's land parcels in a product called Catalyte. For, um, uh, why is it important? I guess I'll, I'll, I'll take a stab at this in case people don't know why, why addresses are important. Um, they're extensively used in navigation. So most of, us, most of you have probably used it to get, probably not to your offices, but if, you, if you're trying to get some petrol on the way home, you may. Um, it's commonly used in infrastructure planning. It's commonly used in government service delivery, including emergency services, although GNAF's not used in the city of New York. So the New York PD police <laughs> picture is probably a little bit misplaced, um, as well as just the simple things like um, the postie getting it, um, mail to rural areas or a, a pizza delivery person getting, um, getting delivery to your door, or even just the estimates of how long it's going to take before you get your pizza. Um, it's so important that the government funded its release as open data in 2016, along with our administrative boundary status set. Um, so that's available now for, uh, for download from data.gov.au. Um, as part of its commitment to improvement, the Department of Prime Minister and Cabinet ran a survey to seek input um, for improvements from users of GNAF. Um, and they received a number of requests for a standards compliant web accessible and queryable endpoint. Um, so PSMA thought it could accomplish this through publication of the data set as linked data. Uh, and went about publishing GNAF and some administrative boundaries and connecting them to, um, to a similar publication task that the ABS were considering. And so what we've, what we've looked to doing is publishing GNAF, publishing um, localities and local government areas from our administrative boundaries data set, um, and then um, assisting in the publication of the um, Australian um, Statistical Geo Geographic Standard main structure, and then linking the data sets all together um, we had a, this, we started this activity with a whole bunch of, of, um, of other people. I wanted to call those out now. Um, so there was a, a number of people who met in a, in a workshop that we ran in Canberra, um, with Geoscience Australia at the time. Um, and basically we had the data providers, Australian Bureau of Stats and us, we had hosting service providers, um, there, which includes, um, CSIRO and, and Geoscience at the time, although um, things have changed a little bit there. Um, there were some people who would be building um, demonstrators. 
as well as some uh, a whole bunch of different experts, which again included CSIRO, uh, members of the Australian Government Link Data Working Group, Rob Atkinson, the Centre for Spatial Data Infrastructures and Land Administration in Victoria, and again, ANS. And so part of that discussion was about getting, getting some guidance on how we might go about this task. Um, and we took some outcomes of that. And then of course, we've been working with CSIRO, um, Nick Carr in particular, to get that data published. A uh, big thanks to you, Nick, and everyone that's, you know, it, that's had an involvement in that. Um, so talking about standards and linking it to code lists comes in this slide where we sort of have a set of standards that we comply to. One of these is a standard called AS4590. So that relates to the exchange interchange of client information. Quite a lot of you are probably aware of that standard. But this is just one of the components that are covered in that. Um, the standard defines the set of components of an address, um, which includes things like flat type and number, level type and number, road number, the things that you see on the screen there. It also includes geocode and its, and its types, um, which include things like front, front centre setbacks and um, parcel and property centroids. Unsurprisingly, a few of these are, are listed as code lists and the standard goes on to in Appendix C, describe um, a code list for flat types and level types in what it calls addressing abbreviations and D, uh, appendix D covers off uh, road types and road suffix um, abbreviations. And so it provides the standard does show um, code lists for those, those types. Um, so the governance of those code lists is quite, is quite limited. AS 4590 is regularly reviewed or it hasn't been reviewed in, in a while. I think, I think it was actually reviewed, but I don't think something's been released yet unless others in the room know. PSMA is, um, is often asked to provide its codes into that because um, the, the standards should be covering legacy or in-use codes. Um, and PSMA, because of its role in the addressing supply chain, is seen as a, um, as a source of the in-use address um, abbreviations for things like the street types, road types, etc. Sorry, uh, street street types, street suffixes, etc. They're largely accepted when we hand them through, but the problem is it's a it's a it's a um, a long time between drinks, I guess, on the on the on the review side, and so we have to still keep um, these things are in use. People still want to have access to the codes um, for things like input validation, and so it causes some problems when there's a long time between drinks. So looking at a, a, way, a better way of doing this, because we're trying to publish these things as linked data, there's gonna be a whole bunch of codes that are, that are packaged up with the data and we want better ways of managing those codes. Um, so that's why we're looking at this now. This is a slide um, from our colleagues at CSIRO that, that they've put into a, um, a recommendation for a farmer's data marketplace. And Essentially, it's a, it, they've been looking at the use of social architecture as a means of deliberately designing the institutional arrangements that underpin information infrastructures for, for quite some time now. So I've borrowed this, um, this image from, from this document that's, um, that I've uh, referenced. Um, and I want to zero in and bring your attention to the area which is highlighted, which is around, it's a section called rules of the game. Um, so Following further from their insights, we've proposed to manage the code lists as registers. Um, and the relevant standard for that is ISO 19135, which is the procedures for item registration. We're using that as a guide to identify things like a list of roles for people who would be involved inside the governance, um, the governance tasks that we've got ahead of us. And so the, the main roles that are in there are register owner, control body, submitting organizations, register manager and registry manager. Um, but the, the question is who would play those roles? And that's a, a, that'd be a common question for a lot of these things which are sort of community managed. Um, here's an example of what those roles mean. That was, I've borrowed this from the Indigenous Locations Working Group, which was set up quite some years ago. I'm not sure where this is up to nowadays. Um, I might throw that to the group. Is anyone aware of what's happened to this? Because I, I was oh, very, sorry. but I, I haven't I heard anything in a while. Joe, do you mean specifically what's happened, if anything, to the Indigenous Locations Working Group? Yeah. yeah. I can't say I know. I, let's, let's wait and see if anyone puts anything in the, in the question. <laughs> yeah. sure. sure. So, so ultimately, ultimately, 
we've got, I've spoke about a whole bunch of different roles. If you see at the top, you've got a register owner who then appoints a control body. Um, they delegate the, um, they, so they, they effectively have the decision authority. You then have a, someone who's managing the regis, register and they request decisions from the control body in order to make sure that the content's kept up to date. They then make the edits to the registrar. They may choose a separate registry manager to effectively host or store that register, make it accessible. Um, and then that's used by the users who I haven't covered in that previous slide. Um, has, has anyone got any questions there? Is everyone, has everyone sort of seen this, um, this standard before? Joe, on, I'm asking on behalf of others. I think uh, some of us definitely have, but um, yeah, yeah. yes, I mean, it was the intention to get you to talk, to talk about, you know, real local deployment of the, this and and yes your question is has anyone else used it so um, yeah. I forgot to say this before if people are interested in either commenting on what Joe's asked uh, said or asking questions there's a chat box here just put your questions down in that chat now and then at the end of Joe's talk we can um, we can visit those and, and, and of course for Joe and for Bridget's talk and see what's written there okay, okay I'll just I'll set up so I'll see if I can answer, I can answer them as they come in <laughs> and there's probably others who could too um, so I'll just move Forward. So it turns out in the world of addressing, these are actually fairly clearly defined. So in terms of the register owner, we've got the Intergovernmental Committee on Surveying and Mapping, and they're the people who have had the, the most input into these code lists when AS4590 comes up for review. So despite the fact that they're not the, um, the, the main people who are reviewing the standard, I think that's because it's such a broad standard. But when it comes to who, what are the code lists, that are being used. They've historically used previous standards created by the, um, or managed by the, the Intergovernmental Committee on Surveying and Mapping or ICSM. Um, and, and, but some of those standards, the, the code lists have been reduced because the main standard that they use is one about new addresses. And of course that doesn't consider some of the legacy ones. They wanna try and reduce the number of ones that are used for new addresses. So that list has come down to 15, um, I think it's 15 or a very small number of codes in the code list, but that's not the whole in-use thing. The in-use thing now is um, sort of being sought from PSMA because we have, we have the, the largest um, um, considered most complete um, data set of those. Um, so the control body was then, um, it, there's, a, there's a permanent committee on, um, on um, addressing, which sits inside the ICSM structure. Um, and they're a logical place to, to delegate um, the, the decisions to with things respect, uh, with respect to, to addressing. So many organisations essentially, for, for us, if, if GNAF becomes the, um, the register, um, then um, the, gov the people who already supply us are, make sense to be the first set of um, submitting organisations. If that if list then needs to be increased, then we can go about doing that. Um, then PSMA is the regist register manager. Once we've got a better handle on, on um, how we want to go about this publication task, then the idea of who would be the registry manager will become more, more um, clear. At the moment, Syro, again, another thank you to Syro who are, who are currently hosting the linked data um, product that we're working on um, and which, which currently contains those code lists. Um, during the course of the linked data demonstrator, we identified how a business process for maintaining the code lists might work. Um, we've pro proposed the business process to the nominated registry owner, which is ICSM, who have accepted their role and delegated the, the, to the nominated, uh, sorry, and the delegation to the nominated control body, which is a permanent committee on um, on addressing, we're currently waiting for the decision to be documented in the permanent committee and addressing's minutes. Um, and in fact, I think they need to accept that responsibility as part of that process as well. I don't believe they've met since um, since we've we've um, asked them to accept their responsibility in this governance process. Um, the GNF contributors will become the first submitting organisations. The business process allows for the resource to be live. Um, and, and still have sol solid governance. This is done by effectively having an experimental data resource that we manage statuses according to ISO 19135's um, statuses. Um, I've added the proposed governance process to the Australian Government Linked Data Working Group GitHub repository. Um, so I'll included the link to that below. 
Um, so if anyone wants to have a look at that, you can just click on that link and, and get in there and have a look. Um, and I guess what I'm keen to hear are people's thoughts, comments and feedback on that. Um, we're, we're looking to hold a retrospective, which what I'd be doing now is inviting those people who participate, all those organisations who participated in the first workshop to get back together, to present to them what we've delivered in terms of the linked data resources, what we haven't, why, some of the impediments, and discuss some of those, um, some of the things that, that get in the way of this task so that we can try and learn from the experience. Um, and then when we start to plan next steps and we still have a little bit of time left to accomplish the entire lot of things, we can learn from what we've done so far and the, um, the collective knowledge in the, at the table. Happy to keep you guys informed of that. So if you put any, any um, feedback or comments into that retrospective process, then I'll bring it to the table when that, and there's a couple of other people in, in the room I noticed that, um, that I'd also like to have who were also there at that first, first workshop. Um, so any one of us can bring your comments into that room and then keep you informed of, of, um, of the, the status of those recommendations in, in the actions that are taken after that. So yeah, so that's it from me. Get involved. We're doing a lot of our, our um, knowledge sharing and information updates to the Australian Government Data Working Group. Um, there's a link to the in progress um, Data, data set, set. That's, that's uh, sorry, let me just turn the volume down. Um, um, there's, there's a link to the, the in progress publication, publication data, data set, set sorry, set, yeah, data set that data we're, we're publishing up there. And also, also if you want to give me an email, email or anything like that, then I'll include my email, email contact, contact details. I'll annotate I'll this, annotate this, this presentation, presentation to, to, to 